Kesha lived on it when the bombs fell. I was in Watoka, coordinating a statewide science fair for that year's high school kids. And the theme was the future of energy. After the bombs, everything was pretty chaotic. Scavenging for food and fighting off rapid survivors. Oh, it was just a bad time all around. I found a couple of surviving kids from the high school whose parents didn't make it. We holed up in a house in town for a while. After a bit, I was able to solder the circuitry in an old radio, and we tuned in to a broadcast from the responders. Oh, we were overjoyed. The trip from Watoka to Flatwoods, it was rough, mind you. The kids and I ran into a group of assholes in the mountains who stole our water. I can't tell you how happy I was to find the responders in Flatwoods. Tents for everyone, open kitchens, medical supplies, protection. <laughs> we were safe. They had a problem, though. Their water sources were contaminated heavily. People were boiling water, but not long enough to make it safe. So, I stepped up and I said, I'll build a testing kit to monitor the contamination and I will teach folks how to properly boil water. <laughs> and I did. The world is getting better, but Slowly. We need to make sure it doesn't relapse, too. It's going to take time and care, that's all. Well, time, care, and science. <sighs> Jesus. I did not think she would shut up. She just kept rabbiting on, didn't she? Anyways, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nick, as always, you can call me Tetra Ninja, and this is some more gameplay of Fallout 76. This is going to be the second last video of the preview event that I attended a couple weeks ago in West Virginia, which was actually the setting of this game. So I actually, at the beginning of the series, you probably know that if you watch the first two videos, I actually was party up partied up with a group of three other members, one Bethesda employee and two other YouTubers slash Twitch people. Uh, and so I want I personally wanted to proceed with the main mission, but the other two were more adventurous and decided they would take full advantage of the open world, go find the Mothman, go to the Greenbrier, go to the Nuka Cola factory. That pretty much the entire world was your oyster and you kinda can proceed in any sort of way that you wanted but I'm more of a story driven guy narrative and I think that's what you guys are more interested in so in order to actually hey there's easy allies as well the old game trailer guys so you probably noticed once again I've said it in the previous episode when you go into areas with other players the frame rate does take a little bit of a hit Equipment contaminated. and now I gotta do in order to do the rest of this early on stuff it's basically just interacting with computers and yeah that's <laughs> i'm actually still at this point i'm still scratching my head that i didn't notice initially that there was not any npcs around the world and i didn't have time to listen to you lady yeah i didn't realize I can't believe I didn't notice there were actually no NPCs at all, which I think is more of a technical limitation rather than a creative one because it would have just been really difficult to get everyone listening to the same NPC and interacting with the same NPC, especially since in previous fall games you could straight up murder people if you want. So, in the early stages, we're still trying to figure out how to survive here. Uh, this is part of the main quest, learning how to boil water, how to create food, but to go make myself some steak a little bit later. So we also have to register. It's I think we're still on thirst things first, and now we have to figure out how to cook and all that type of stuff. So yeah, the... Ooh, 
also got some perk cards. Uh, the perk cards are another major thing that has definitely changed in this game. It's not the same leveling up system that we've become accustomed to in previous Fallout games. You have these cards now, you stack the cards, and you can actually, if you have the proper abilities equipped, you can actually exchange cards between party members as well. So if you do plan on the party, playing in a party, I recommend buying as much charisma as possible. That way you can share and get bonus XP and share cards between players and just keep stacking them and stacking them and stacking them. And yeah, so we got a nice little stash right here for completing the first quest. I actually didn't find that maintaining my hunger as well as maintaining my hydration levels was as difficult as they are in other survival based games and I think that's a good thing because it's not Reverend Delbert Winters here, born and raised in this very town. Met my own church to the responders for their outpost here, and uh you're welcome. The responders are on a true mission, you see. Helping folks through thick and thin till the heavens open up again and take us all up anyways. When this all happened I figured, like most, it was time. This was the end, but but it wasn't, was it? We're still here. At first, I thought it was a mistake, that we was missed, forgotten. Maybe we did some wrongs. Didn't give enough to charity, maybe. Didn't praise his name, even in the worst of times. Maybe thought some things that ought not to have been thought. So I asked him. I asked how? Why? I fought your wars on Earth. I'm ready to fight them up there by your side. Then in my despair, I saw some survivors eating raw rat carcass behind the dumpster. You gotta cook that first, I warned them. Seemed odd. We tried but got sick, they said, covered in their own filth. I realized right then and there that I was being tasked. From then on, I built kitchens, cooked good food, fed anyone who walked up with an empty belly. And I was thankful for my task in life. Thankful. <laughs> Next time hell or high water land in my stoop, I'll be swept clear away with it. But till then, let's share a home-cooked meal together, all right? All right, all right. Gotta complete my training here. So as you can see, there are several people in this area and the frame rate is choppy at least. <laughs> and I'm not 100% sure how to take that. On one hand, I will, I will be playing, if I'm playing this game on PC, this is the Xbox One X version of the game. On the other hand though, we are kind of all in the same room playing on what I can think is the same server. So it doesn't get any lower latency than that so yeah we're gonna have to just wait for the full game uh, I know there's the Xbox one exclusive beta that's coming up in the near future but I don't think I can really make a judgment on how this game will perform to my liking until we actually play the PC version of the game so yeah anyways we got some more abilities because we reached level we reached level 5 and level 5 is actually a very important level because at level 5 you get a nice perk cards as well um, this is me arranging them in some sort of way that makes sense in my head at level 5 you gain the ability to kill other people in the world so now you can actually take advantage or abuse depending on how you want to view it uh, the PvP system and actually be able to hunt other players in the world and kill them and do other stuff to them and <laughs> things like that. There is a kind of risk system as well because if you go after another player, I said this in a previous video, if they engage you back, like fight you back, that's fine. Um, then it just becomes a standard PvP match. But if they do not fight back at all and you kill them, you actually get labeled as a murderer. Do a little fast travel here through on the map and become highlighted as a murderer. This ledge right here is just not behaving itself. Uh, there is, yeah, and then you get labeled as a murderer on the map and, and you get highlighted as a murderer and other people on the map can't see you. So 
yeah, it's too... <laughs> so, <laughs> depends on how frisky that you want to get. So, as I'm in my pit boy right here, I actually get jumped by some feral ghouls. I was actually thinking I was going to be in trouble for a second, but luckily for me, there was some backup. So, throughout the entire session and as well on the servers, not only were there YouTubers, they are also rogue and helpful Bethesda awful employees. So, you see that gunfire in the background, that guy, that level 59 BS dev decided to give me a hand dealing with the ghoul. You actually see them a little bit later. I think he also drops, he went to drop a bag of equipment for me or supplies for me and I just skedaddled too quickly to pick it up. It happens a little bit later as well when I encounter more employees. They give you some goodies to take advantage of. Uh, but yeah, what was I saying before that? Oh right, I was trying to get to the point of whether or not how alive I think this world feels because without the NPCs and all that type of stuff. Also, I entered this area right here and I actually take use of the VAT system for the very first time. And I actually was not aware that they revamped it and changed how it functioned. So in previous fall games, you guys probably know that when you use the VAT system, it goes into this little slowdown mode where things get slowed down and you get that really cool shot animation and the cinematic kind of shot like that. But in this game, it's all real time. Even though you employ the VAT system, you target whatever section that you plan to use. And then, see here, I'm just trying to, uh, I have no idea what's going on. You, you, you target whatever section that you plan to shoot and you just fire and it goes in there. You don't get the slow mo animation or anything. It's just, just all happens in real time. So it's not as iconic, but functionally it makes sense to because with other players in the world, they just, I think it's just be a technical nightmare to employ that system and all that type of stuff. I'm still struggling to figure out right here what the heck is going on with this system. But yeah, anyways, so if you are a single player person by yourself and you like the solo experience and you have no plans whatsoever of jumping into a party with other players in the world, interacting with other players, I how much are you going to get out of the game? I honestly don't think. Uh, also, there's also uh, a system where your weapons will also deteriorate after a set amount of time. You can also, you actually can repair them using some materials along the way. I'm kind of freaking out right now because I'm like naked. I feel I don't want to break up my pit boy to equip another weapon. So. How much will you get out of this game if you just play it by yourself? Like I said in the previous episode, they told me that you can play 75% of the game by yourself. Uh, but the problem is that I saw, I didn't really see, I know this was only the first couple hours of the game. I wasn't really drawn into any sort of engaging story where I really absolutely needed to see what happened with the narrative in the future. And here I'm just jumping right here inside, inside the menu. <laughs> so close to death. But yeah, and so in previous Fall games, there the, was usually a clear story line that you wanted to follow just to get the most out of it as you possibly could. But at least in the first couple hours of the game, I didn't really see one. So I'm not, I'm hoping not. It's not 75% of just kind of generic fetch quest. I really hope they do put effort into some actual story that is engaging, but we're not going to be able to find out until we actually play the game, obviously. So I'm just kind of doing my thing. Uh, you still see around here we have some technical issues. The, most of the technical issues were, were just with the frame rate. I didn't have any issues where things would just bug out or things would just simply not work, which is kind of... For better or for worse, kind of, <laughs> it's kind of like a, it's a Bethesda trait where sometimes things just bug out and things don't work. But I actually did not encounter uh, that much. That being, being said, they probably bought, a, uh, they probably polished at least the first couple hours of the game fairly well. Um, so yeah, take that for what it's worth. So we're gonna continue with the narrative here. I need to explore this. I don't even know at this airport in order to get the next step of the quest and I actually encountered my first death in this game because I just was kind of
kind of reckless. But that's going to be it for me for this episode. I'm going to leave you guys with the rest of the gameplay. In the next episode, we're going to be focused more on my first PvP encounter. Ooh, we got like a power armor station right here. As well as we're going to finish the series off or this preview footage off with a bang. So you guys can look forward to that. But until then, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. And I will see us next time. All right. As always, have a fast day. Sears Log, Morgantown. I used to love coming here on weekends, taking flight lessons. Now it feels like I walked into a nightmare. Those scorched things are everywhere. I kept quiet. They didn't see me. Responder Survivors Volunteer Program. Advanced Training. Camping. 